Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit. My name is Maya Korringel, and I'm a member of the SEO Board of Directors, and I'm also the co-managing partner of the RISE Fund, which is TPG's uh, impact fund. I am thrilled tonight to be able to moderate a fireside chat and also participate in the virtual achievement benefit as we celebrate and recognize two significant milestones for SEO Scholar San Francisco. The first milestone being the 10th anniversary of uh, SEO Scholar San Francisco. And the second is doubling our program's impact through uh, some very important expansion. Over the next decade, SEO Scholars is going to serve over 500 Bay Area students on their journey to and through college graduation with an expected 90% graduation rate. And each of you has played a role in the growth of this uh, program and reaching these milestones. And on behalf of our board, our staff, and the scholars, most importantly, thank you for your commitment, your investment, and for tuning in to the achievement benefit. So let's get started. Tonight, we're gonna hear from two distinguished private equity leaders, John Winkleried and Henry Kravis. I'm delighted to curate a conversation with them where they are going to share their personal perspectives on their leadership philosophy, their professional and educational journeys, the importance of SEO and its values in their lives and more. And although they need no introduction, I'm gonna kick off with some headlines about our speakers. John Winkleried is the CEO of TPG where he oversees the day-to-day -day operations of the firm and where I have the pleasure of seeing him work his craft uh, every day. TPG was founded in 1992 and has more than 100 billion in assets under management. And John joined TPG in 2015 after a 27 year career with uh, Goldman Sachs, which he topped off as president and co-chief operating officer of that firm. TPG is a very proud longtime SEO partner and we co-founded SEO's alternative investments program with uh, KKR. Henry Kravis is the co-founder, co-chair, and co-CEO of KKR, which was founded in 1976 and today has over $400 billion in assets under management across multiple strategies. In 2009, KKR co-founded SEO's Alternative Investments Program alongside TPG, and since assuming the role of SEO's national board chair in 2014, Henry has been a tireless champion uh, for SEO Scholars Program, doubling its size in New York City and actively generating support for the San Francisco chapter. So we have until 6 p.m. tonight, so let's get started uh, with a few questions for our guests. Hi, John. Hi, Henry. Um, let, me, let me start by uh, talking about um, the fact that SEO's mission is to match historically underserved and historically excluded young people to educational and professional opportunities. And John, um, would love it if you would start off by talking to us about the role that education and mentorship uh, played in your own life, because those stories are always inspiring and important for our, for our scholars. Thanks, Maya. Um, and um, I just want to say that it's, a, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be on the panel today with Henry, um, who I've known for a long time as well in my prior life and, uh, uh, and now, you know, joining today in, in support of SEO. So um, it's great to be here. Um, you know, education, I mean, first of all, I, um, I at its very core, I grew up in a household that was very focused on education. And uh, it was really the foundation of kind of most everything that happened in my, in my, in my home. Um, you know, my parents expected a lot of us with respect to our focus on education. My mother was a school teacher um, and uh, I grew up in a, in a home with a, a one brother. And, we, and my parents came from that generation where, um, you know, focusing on education as sort of a springboard to opportunity um, and really kind of giving, giving yourself options with respect to uh, building your base and, uh, and, um, and, you know, having a better opportunity than my parents' generation was really based 
on the philosophy of education underpinning all of that. So um, at its very core, that was really um, central in everything that sort of uh, was, uh, was part of my upbringing. And mentorship was really also kind of a key um, part of really my journey o- overall, because I think mentorship probably started with my dad um, and, uh, you know, um, him writing hurt on me in, a, in, a, in, a, in an appropriate way. And, um, and then all through my career, I mean, from the very beginning at Goldman, I seem to have had the privilege and the benefit of some really strong mentors that took an interest in me, pushed me, um, you know, um, in some cases gave me opportunities that I probably wasn't exactly ready for, but it's those sort of stretch opportunities where mentors take an interest in you and believe in you that really make the difference in terms of your development and uh, having you you know, force, force you to be adaptable and force you to, to adjust. Um, so um, I would say overall, just very, very critical in my whole journey. So, so you would say to the SEO scholars who um, feel the pressure of, 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 of work and high expectations, it's good for you. Keep going. Yeah, I think, you know, um, when you feel like um, when, when you either get that whisper, you know, in one of your ears, like, you know, keep pushing, keep going. Um, when you get somebody that um, is, giving you, is, is, is giving you advice or when you're getting that kind of tough love occasionally, you know, um, take it on and, um, and really embrace it. And I think, you know, as we know, part of the mission of SEO has been all about really trying to provide that, that sort of, of that framework for, you know, uh, people understanding the value of mentorship, people understanding the value of driving um, uh, to excellence in your education and giving yourself, giving, opening up opportunities or giving yourself, making opportunities happen. Um, and SEO has been, has been brilliant in doing that, right. In terms of like an institutional framework around, um, creating, uh, the opportunity to, um, to, uh, kind of step off the edge, if you will, because there's, 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 there's some support structure around that. No, that's great. Um, Henry, if I can, if I can ask you to share, you know, some of your own life experience and, and the role that education and mentorship played for you. My, first of all, Maya, thank you for agreeing to be um, the moderator here. Uh, you're a great addition to our board, our national board at SEO, and we're thrilled to have you as part of that. Uh, John, I have known you a long time, particularly in your different roles at, at Goldman Sachs. Uh, I've always had incredible admiration and respect for you. And so to be able to share a panel with you is a, a a great uh, honor for me, and thank you for agreeing to do this to, to help SEO. We appreciate it uh, very much. The, the question about uh, mentorship in, in, in our life, uh, if we're lucky in life, you have one or more mentors. I was lucky, and like John, my father was an incredible mentor, pushed me constantly to do better uh, in everything that I did, which encouraged me to, to take risks, to challenge myself constantly. And, and that in and of itself was extremely uh, helpful. Um, two other people in my life that were extremely helpful along the way when I was younger, uh, one was uh, a teacher I had in, in high school and he encouraged me to take his economics course. I, I couldn't spell economics. I didn't know what it was, but I took this course and I loved it. I mean, it was, uh, to this day, I remember how excited I got about it and I couldn't wait to open uh, the economics books that I had to read. And that was extremely uh, useful. He kept pushing me and pushing me and I, I really uh, give him a lot of credit for the reason that I ended up going into business. Um, and that was, that was extremely helpful. And another person was a boss that I had at uh, the Madison Fund uh, in, uh, in New York. And it was uh, my, at, right after I graduated from, from uh, college, um, I went to work this Madison, at the Madison Fund for a short for a summer stint before I went on to business school. 
And he just kept pushing me. And he'd say, you're going to go out and you're going to call on the CEO of this company or that company. And the last one being, uh, you're going to go call on Roy Disney at the Disney company. And I was scared to that. So, so who's going with me? And he said, no one, you're going yourself. And that in and of itself pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I, and I learned that, you know, if I'm going to see somebody like that, and I'm a kid that just graduated from college, I better, you know, know what I'm talking about. And I was, I was lucky. Uh, I got out there and he said, Henry, I have one hour uh, to meet with you. And I said, well, that's great. And we got about halfway through it. By the way, I had read absolutely everything I could about the Disney company. I read 10 Ks, 10 Qs, uh, research report, annual report, et cetera. And I wrote out all my questions. We started talking and he said, Henry, he said, you know a lot about my company. He said, most people that come out here to talk to me, just expect me to tell, uh, to tell them the whole story. He said, you've obviously done a lot of work. And he said, I know I told you that, uh, I had only an hour for you. Uh, but he said, because you care so much about the Disney company, uh, I want you to go with me to every one of my meetings today. And at the end of the day, I will take you on a, uh, tour of the Disney studios, uh, personally. And it was an incredible, uh, experience. And I pushed that back really to, um, Ed Merkel, the, the president of the Madison fund, because he, uh, was the one that encouraged me to go take these risks, get out there get out of my comfort zone. And that was what was really important. So I try to tell all younger uh, people today, get out of your comfort zone, you know, uh, take, uh, take those, get into those uncomfortable positions because you'd be amazed how much you can accomplish uh, out there on your own. So mentorship meant a, a very big uh, an amount to me and I look back and I say, I think I'm where I am today in large part of that early formative mentorship. No, that's that's extremely helpful and actually, you know, interesting some of the, the comments that resonate between your experience and, and John's. So, you know, Henry, if we can stay with you for a moment, um, one of the things that has impressed me not only in my um, year as a member of the board of SEO, but also thinking back to SEO alum who I went to college with, who I went to business school uh, with, is one of the things that SEO does well is to build future leaders. And um, would love for you to share a, wor a few words about your own leadership style and you know some pearls of wisdom that you can you can pass along to the to the group about leadership. Well, first of all, every time I talk about leadership and um, I think about it. They say, you know, you can't be a leader unless you got followers. Yeah. So the only way you're going to have followers is to be able to communicate uh, with people, be able to communicate whatever it is you're trying to get across. I'm also of the belief that a, a leader is someone who takes people uh, to, 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 to areas they never thought they could reach, never thought they could attain. And uh, so... I'm a big believer in that. I'm also a very big believer in uh, when it comes to leadership, it's all about the team that you put together. It's not about one person. I don't care who it is. Uh, and interestingly, when I have an opportunity to interview CEOs and we're thinking about hiring for one of our portfolio companies, I'm always listening to see, are they talking about their team? Or is everything they're talking about is about them? <laughs> you know, I did this, I did that. And I'm not sure one can be a great leader uh, unless they bring their team along and unless they uh, show them uh, where they can get. Sure, leadership means a lot of things to a lot of people. And one of them is, to, to me anyway, is what kind of value system do you have? You know, I think all of us, uh, are only as good as the compass that we have within ourselves. Uh, what is the, uh, the um, values that you live by day in and day out, not just, you know, internally, but, you know, are you, and not, and not just talking about it, but what are you doing to, uh, to show it, to show it day in and day out, just your example of your life 
is awfully good leadership in and of itself. No, that's 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 so that's so true. Um, John, if you can um, maybe talk a little bit about your leadership style. I mean, you 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 have uh, a lot of fans here within TPG. You have a lot of fans at Goldman Sachs. I'm happy to say, um, among women in finance, um, you are one of our favorites um, uh, because you're a great leader. But talk a little bit about your own leadership values. Yeah, my well, I think um, Henry touched on a lot of really important things there. Um, the one, th one, one thing that um, among a number that, that Henry mentioned that resonates with me um, is this question of team. Um, you know, I think that uh, I learned very, very early on. I remember when I was at Goldman Sachs, I was, I think I was, a, a, it was um, just, it was before I was a partner at Goldman Sachs and I was working with a client on a financing and the client was asking me uh, questions about what I thought about how to structure it, how to market it, et cetera. And I was going through this discussion and there was a partner of the firm who was on the phone with me. And I can distinctly remember, I'll never forget this. I can distinctly remember I was talking about, well, I think the market's doing this and I think we should structure it like this, et cetera. And I got off the phone with me, I got off the phone and the partner called me back and said, listen, the content's great except every time you talk about the view that we have, you use the word, I think, as opposed to we think. And you're representing the firm when you say that. And so that, that stuck with me. I've never forgotten that in terms of um, how I think about team and how I think about presenting um, uh, what we're doing. And um, so I think team is really critically important. And I always um, have taken an approach of trying to lead in partnership with my partners, with, you know, with other people on the team. Um, it's really, you know, I, I, I learned early on in my career that um, it's businesses like ours are not command and control. They're really not. They're really team and, um, and, and developing, being a great leader is also about being able to, to take other people's views um, to develop uh, dissenting views, uh, competing views, um, but ultimately trying to develop and drive towards some consensus. At the end of the day, somebody, someone may need to make a decision, right? And so um, a good leader is comfortable making decisions, but a good leader is somebody that I think you come out of that process where people feel like they've been heard. Um, and so um, that's always been sort of a core part of how I think about uh, leadership. I think the other thing I would say, Maya, to your point is that I've had some experiences along the way where I realized that um, promoting um, a diverse environment where you have um, people that come from different places, different points of view, different perspectives is not only good in terms of decision making, but it's also something that creates, in my view, a richer environment day in, day out. Um, to be a part of. And I think that, you know, over the course of my career, I remember, um, you know, to Henry's point about getting out of your comfort zone. At one point, I was asked to move to Europe to run part of um, Goldman Sachs's operations in Europe. And um, I was kind of hesitant in the beginning. And I realized that, you know, um, at the end of the day, kind of pushing myself out of my comfort zone was the right thing to do. When I, when I, when I landed um, in Europe and realized that the complexion of people um, was very different than what it was in the U.S. Um, it was a much more um, heterogeneous environment. And it really struck me at how um, interesting and enjoyable and different that kind of atmosphere was. And it made an imprint on me hmm. in, ter in, in terms of um, trying to um, think about that as sort of a core principle of driving diversity, driving a broad group of different types of people's, people and points of view. So I've always sort of tried to incorporate that and live that in terms of my leadership style. Um, and, um, you know, and ultimately, um, you know, I feel like um, the last thing I would say is I, I, I think it's important that people as, as a leader, I think it's important that people um, understand kind of what your objectives are, what your goals are, and that you're reasonably transparent about it. I think it's much easier for people to adapt to 
how are you think, you know, how does, how does the person that's kind of leading the operation or leading the business or leading the firm, how do they think about things and, um, and, um, and be transparent about it or have sort of a true North, if you will, in terms of what you're trying to drive for. Um, and so I believe that uh, that's helpful as well in terms of your leadership style. That's great. If, if I can ask you, John, to just go back to that point of diversity. So um, the last two years have obviously presented pretty significant challenges and opportunities also for social change. And can you talk about um, how you and um, to an extent TPG have responded to the push for racial equity um, in, in, in light of what's, what's happened uh, in society over the last couple of years? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I mean, first of all, I think just to put it in perspective, I think we probably would all agree that the last couple of years have been, have presented incredible, an incredible set of challenges as it relates to um, the, um, the social justice movement and um, some combination of the, um, the visibility as a result of how we're all tied, how we're all connected some combination of the visibility and the reality that it creates for all of us, that there are serious issues of inequity um, around us, that there's serious bias. And, um, and the interesting thing is over the last couple of years as, as um, we've witnessed um, some real stress in our society, um, it's, it's prompted me to be a little bit of a student of this issue going back over the years. And, it's fascinating how, when you look at the sequence of time, how some of the things that we're dealing with today are so similar, actually, to what they've been over time. Um, and, um, and so I think that the, uh, but the difference maybe is sort of technology and the transparency of it all and how we're all sort of viewing it day to day. And um, in some respects, that's a real gift because it's allowed us to sort of share it with one another and one of the things that we've done at TPG, as you know, is that we have tried to use it as a, a bit of an inflection point and a catalyst for getting people together to talk about these issues. So, for instance, you know, we hosted a series of roundtables that you hosted some, I hosted some, other partners of the firm hosted them. And we got small groups of people together to talk about how people were really feeling about this. And frankly, it was very revealing. And I think it was a real learning experience for a lot of people in terms of people they work with day in, day out, they share the same kind of work experience with and how different their life experience is on a day in, day out basis. People who feel, um, I remember one of the women that works for us, a black woman who works for us was describing how she feels uncomfortable going out for a run. And so she wears a sweatshirt that actually has the words Wharton on it because she feels like it kind of it signals to people that she's either educated or you know she's not running from somebody and a pr pretty extraordinary sort of life experiences that that people who are sitting right next to you day to day and you don't really truly appreciate i think it's given us at the firm a greater much greater appreciation for sort of what um some of the challenges are um that people have to live with that you don't really fully appreciate until you sort of get it put right in your face in a different type of way. Um, and so, you know, among other things, I mean, that's something that we've been focused on this year. We've been obviously very focused on the composition of our people and, you know, and, and, and trying to drive toward much more um, diversity and equity in our organization, trying to drive toward our organization being a place where people feel like they can be their, their true selves. Um, and so we've worked very hard on that. We're, you know, as you know, our last two associate classes are 50% diverse, either um, gender or racially or ethnically. Um, many of which, by the way, are SEO um, uh, 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 graduates. Um, so um, we've um, we've taken, in some respects, we in in terms of this environment that we're living, we've taken we've tried to use it as an opportunity to really uh, catalyze further the consensus around the importance of this issue in our firm. No, that's so true. Um, Henry, you started as national board chair, obviously, before um, the challenges of the last two years. And, you know, KKR has has always had a long commitment to 
um, ESG and a lot of the values that matter to SEO. But can you talk a little bit about, you know, what your um, sense of the world is, right, in, in, in terms of um, racial um, and social equity, um, given the last two years? Well, look, the, the, the alternative investment industry has really been late in coming to the party in general. Um, we were late coming to the party and hiring women. We were late coming to the party and hiring diverse uh, talent. And uh, all of us, like John has said, are really working very hard to try to make up for it. I've been a huge believer, and I've said over and over again, that you have to have diversity of gender, ethnicity, and thought. And they're all important. Um, and uh, so what we've done at KKR is, in 2015, we started a diversity and inclusion council. We hired a, a head of uh, diversity and inclusion at the firm. And we've made a, a real effort. We've made str great strides. And that has, uh, that's, I think, will hold us in very good stead. John mentioned something that I think is really interesting and important. And I think during this period of COVID, many of us have really opened up much more and are willing to share experiences. So during the, 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 the intense COVID period, when we all were locked down in our house, we decided at, at KKR that we would have a series of uh, conversations, we call them. And some of them were honestly uncomfortable, but they were great. And we asked uh, uh, black executives uh, and, and, and others from not-for-profit and from the government to come in and talk to us. And I moderated a lot of those. And just having the chance, tell us your story. And it was amazing, as John just mentioned, about the woman who works for you, who wore the Wharton uh, T-shirt. Every one of these uh, people told us stories about how uh, unconscious bias has affected them. And so one of the things that we did also was bring in uh, a team of people out of Harvard to come in and work on unconscious bias training. Uh, to uh, to help our people understand uh, what this is all about. Um, today, where we are is we've made great strides. Like TPG, we've been able to uh, bring in a number of SEO grads uh, over the years, and uh, we have summer interns coming in. I think we've got 10 already coming in for next uh, summer, summer 2022. And um, it's a step in the right direction. Um, it, it, one of the things that we also did, we made a commitment that we would have on every board uh, of directors of a company that we controlled at KKR through our private equity group, uh, that we'd have at least two, if not more diverse board members. That could be women or could be um, uh, uh, Latinx or uh, black uh, directors. We've accomplished that. We Now I want to take it even further and not just have it, the women be part of that. I want to try to get more of the Latinx and more uh, black members on the on these boards. It's made, it's made a huge difference. I think our companies, I know for sure, KKR is a much better uh, company as a result of having this uh, diversity that we have. It also brings diversity of thought and different backgrounds. You know, we all get so busy and we're focused on quote unquote the deal at the time or whatever it is. And we don't spend enough time getting to know each other and find out what makes people tick. I read a great book uh, a while ago called um, uh, 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 singing Vivaldi and um, and it was the same kind of thing of wearing that Wharton uh, sweatshirt this uh, black man would whistle Vivaldi because he thought if he did that people would say well he's educated he's okay and that bias might might go away and it 
these kinds of things just opened my eyes. And I think for all of us, and I've had many of our people say, thank you for doing this. It really uh, brought attention to something that we weren't even aware of. And, you know, we all have to, to do our part here and it's long overdue. Thank you, Henry. Well, we could we could spend hours um, with you both, but I think that's all the time that we have together. And um, what I want to say for me personally, but also on uh, behalf of the rest of the board, both both on the national board and the San Francisco board and the team and the sponsors, we thank both of you for your personal commitment for your longstanding um, support of uh, SEO and all you do um, in service of the organization and um, making a difference in um, the systemic challenges that we that we face today through your support of SEO. And so now for the big show, um, the SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit. We have quite a speaker lined up tonight. Um, you're going to hear again from our uh, 2021 honoree, uh, John Winkle-Reed, as well as Pierre Theodore. You're going to hear from advisory board members, Philip Yao and John Rogers. Um, you're going to hear from the SEO scholar, San Francisco board chair, my former classmate, um, I'm a big fan, and uh, uh, the founder, Adam Carr, um, plus some special guests, Charles Schwab, Vicky Tsai, and more. So I can't wait to hear from this lineup, and I'm very um, excited, as I am in every board meeting, to hear directly um, from the phenomenal SEO scholars themselves. This is something that you know Henry does at every board meeting, um, bringing some of the scholars along to speak to us about their experiences, and we derive so much inspiration as uh, the scholars tell us about pursuing their dreams of becoming first generation college graduates and finding educational and uh, and uh, professional opportunities that um, are available to them because of SEO. So stay tuned um, as the 2021 SEO Scholars Achievement Benefit officially begins and over to you, Omar Wandera. 